fourth or less than 2.5. So we've done pretty much every type of factoring. The only type we have left is special cases. So we're going to go over technically only really two of them, but one of them is a variation. So we'll say three, three different types of special cases. Uh, we have an example on the board. If you notice, where we normally have B, I've replaced B with an expression, OK? Actually, the X shouldn't be in brackets. It's just the uh, just 2AC I want, OK? Uh, in your book, they've written it as 2A squared X squared plus 2A. And then they have a B. And on the outside, they have a B again. We're going to use C because we're used to calling our last term C. We just changed it a little, so we're used to what we're doing here. These are called perfect squares, OK? So we have to look at our equation and see if it works in our model. It's the only way we can use this type of factoring, OK? So you're going to have to use this type of factoring when you're going through stuff. The order of factoring, I want you guys to look through common factors first, then look for special cases, and then look for our quadratic factoring, where we put them into two brackets. So I'm going to get to how this looks. First of all, our a, in this case is a 9, can be, it's a perfect square. I can get the square root of it. So the square root of 9 is going to be 3. Okay? So I'm just going to put that on the side so I know. And our last term, our c, as we're calling it, is also a perfect square. We can get a whole number when we find the square root. The square root is 2. So that's two parts I've checked. So far, it looks like it's working. The only other thing I have to check is if the middle term works, so where we normally have b. So what that means is I have to take the 2 and the 3, 3 and the 2, and I have to add, sorry, not add, multiply another 2. So I take the square root of the last term, square root of the first term, multiply them together, and then multiply them again by 2. So we multiply them together and multiply them again by 2. If that answer comes out to the term in the middle, what we normally call our b, then this is a perfect square and we can factor this using our special case. So in this case, we have 2 times 3 is 6, times 2 is 12 works out perfect. So because that works out perfect, instead of having our normal, actually, no, we'll go to our normal brackets, and I'll show you how to, uh, how to condense it after. So because that works out, our middle term, we don't really have to worry about this. This is just a check, OK? We take our first term, put it in. We keep our attached x just like we did before. And we use that term for both. And then our last term, which is our 2, we put that in for both. So we have the exact same numbers inside the brackets. And the sign that we put in between them is just the sign in front of this term. So because it's positive, we're using a positive number here. So if you notice, both brackets are the exact same. So technically, this can be simplified in one more step. Instead of writing it as two different brackets, I'm just going to write it as one bracket <coughs> and put a squared sign on the outside. So this is how we factor our special case. So we have to do some mental math. Check it out first. So we'll go over this again. I take, make sure the first number can be square rooted. Make sure the last number can be square rooted. When you get both those numbers, oh, that didn't work out so nice. When you get both those numbers, we multiply them together. So that's our 3. <coughs> that's our 3. Whoa. 3 and our 2. We multiply them by 2 once again. Because we ended up at 12, we knew that it was a special case. And we could factor it this way. If these things don't go true for our quadratic expression, so if we can't find the square root of the first term a, or we can't find a whole number square root of the last term, then we can't use special case to factor. This only works for certain ones. Okay? I'm going to give you guys a question to work with. <laughs>
So the question said x squared plus 10x plus 25. So first of all, I've got to check out the first term. What first term is technically in front of this x? 1. Can I find the square root of 1? Yeah. What is it? One. Real easy. It is 1. So if there's no number there, it's assumed there's a 1. You can find the perfect square of that number. Okay, so we take our first term, the square root of it is a 1, so you know that works out nice. Our last term, 25, it's also a perfect square, and we know that it's 5. So we take this 5, so we'll do this on the outside to help you stay organized. We take the 5, and we take the 1, and we make sure to multiply by 2. Guys, this is the important step. Questions on your test may work if you don't multiply by 2. They'll be trick questions, okay? Make sure you remember to multiply them by 2 at the end. So 5 by 1 by 2 is 10. We know that this works. This is where our B term normally is. So because that multiplication works, we can use a special case to factor this. So once again, it's quite easy. We just take our square roots of our first term. So we have our 1x, 1x. Always keep the x attached to the first one. 5, 5. And whatever the sign is in front of our b term, we just fill it in. We'll do one right now. So our final answer, x plus 5 squared. Okay, so this is the exact same idea. We're going to check this one. I'm just going to show you one with a different sign in the middle so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Exact same steps. Check for our A. Square root is 2. Check for our C. I can get the square root of 12. That works out. So I take 12 by 2 by 2 again ends up equaling 48. So because this is 48, I know that this special type of factoring is going to work. Plug them into the brackets. 2x, 2x, 12, 12, and this is the only part that's different. Because in front of the 48 we have a negative sign, I put a negative sign inside these brackets. Simplifies to 2x, subtract 12 squared. That's everything we've covered so far. Those are the first cases.